All right. Hi, everyone. Same process as before. I'll uh, try my best to keep up with questions and, and run the mic for you all. Uh, but Mark Anthony Kay of Toronto FC and the Canadian men's national team with us now. Um, Mark, I guess I'll open up by just saying, you know, uh, after such an exciting kind of 2022 season, first year with Bob Bradley as head coach, um, obviously Lorenzo Insigne, Federico Bernadeschi coming into the team, just lots of cool movement going on with everybody. How excited are you looking into this second year under Bradley and, and with all those guys that are just so talented and world class? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, this year is going to be exciting. We have a very good roster. The front office staff has done a good job of picking up important players and piecing the team together. Obviously, I think they're still working hard to fill in a couple more gaps, but um, no, to have a full preseason with all these players with Bob. Um, and allowing Bob to, you know, inject his ideas and the culture he wants with the team and the way he wants us to play football, I think is going to do us a tremendous amount of good going into a, a, a second season under him. So um, I'm excited. Uh, I, I'm itching to, to get back out there, but obviously we have to take things slow. But uh, it's going to be a good year for sure. And obviously you're also coming into a year where Canada just returned to the World Cup for the first time in quite some time um, and, you know, showcase some pretty exciting soccer at the World Cup, albeit not getting out of the group stage. You know, um, kind of coming back into Toronto and stuff, have you seen any kind of immediate effect that the World Cup hype has had around in the city? Yeah, I actually have. And I was talking about it earlier with my wife that, you know, I go into grocery stores now and, you know, you're getting recognized by almost everybody. and. You know, they're stopping to, to say how good of a uh, job you did with the national team, how proud they are, and how they're looking forward for the next one. And that just lets you know that we've done a real good job to start changing the landscape of football in Canada. And more people are going to get involved, which means the game's going to grow more, and that benefits all of us. So I'm glad that we were able to share that experience with everyone back home, and now we look forward to 26 and try to get prepared for that. Hey, Mark, nice to see you again. Yes, Happy nice New to Year. see you too. Congratulations on the World Cup. Thank you, appreciate and I'm it. I'm sure it's a fulfillment of a lifetime dream. But I have a serious question for you. Mm -hmm. When you were at LAFC in 2020, you and I talked a lot about things that were going on, which led to the start of Black Players for Change. Mm -hmm. So a couple years later, are you satisfied with the progress? And some of the things you experienced in LA, has is that better now that you're back in Toronto? Yeah, I think um, at that moment in our you know history within the league and what was going on in the world, you know, um, I kind of answered the call to step up in a certain way to vocalize what a lot of players were feeling, um, a lot of black players were feeling, and you know I took on the responsibility to help kind of start a wave of a new way of you know looking at things from an administrative point of view, from a political point of view, from all sorts of points of views, and I think. Uh, with the injection of the Black Players for Change, we started to really see some initiatives get put into place um, to show that the league was 100% bought into being part of the change and part of the solution. Um, I wear many hats, and there are people that are much better than me at dealing with certain topics, and I've learned that sometimes it's good to lead from behind. So um, I haven't been as involved as I would like but I'm definitely a part of everything they've been able to achieve, and I continue to be a part of that, and it's just finding a balance with my other endeavors too, but I've never stopped. So um, yeah, 2020 was a weird year for all of us, for all of us, so um, I hope that we never have to go back to that and we can continue to move forward. But in terms of you know my lifestyle at that time in LA, um, compared to now in Toronto, obviously Toronto's my home, so um, I'm naturally going to get treated differently, you know. But um, I think the the same problems that were in the world in 2020 are still everywhere in the world right now, and we just have to continue to educate people and to continue to to talk about these topics to get more people on on the side for the good guys, so that we can, uh, you know, kind of eradicate what uh, the world doesn't need anymore. Yeah.
What's going on, Mark? Good to see you. How are you? Pretty good. A um, few questions here. First one, uh, I'm not sure if the, for players this means too much, but as a Canadian, I feel like it's kind of important, the uh, partnership with Apple and just seeing how um, it just kind of seems like a monumental shift for the league once again. Uh, just in your perspective, how important that is to be having games available, you know, worldwide, but also in Canada. No, it's massive. Um, <laughs> I actually didn't know how difficult it was for, I guess, Canadians. You know, I can't speak on the rest of the world, but for Canadians to watch MLS games, you know, and now being home um, with Toronto and my mom, you know, was always messaging me, ah, I can't get the game. I, your game is at, at 10 p.m. my time when I was playing in L.A. And, you know, it never really crossed my mind that uh, a partnership like this would really alleviate a lot of those stresses for so many of our fans, our families, our friends. Um, and for the players too, because we watch MLS all the time. So um, it's 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 a good feeling to know that the league understands um, these issues and have done a really good job to put a deal together that can uh, put us in a better position to bring MLS to the world. You know, um, MLS has continued to grow over the years, and I've only been in the league for six years, but <laughs> the amount of growth is is mind blowing. So uh, I think this is only the, scratching the surface with this Apple deal. And I'm really happy that they've done it. Along those lines, there's big expectations on the team. You've kind of already mentioned your agent to get going. Every team will say MLS Cup is that aspiration. But what are your realistic? Uh, what is your realistic perspective of what this team could accomplish coming into the season? I, I, I really think sky's the limit. It's like obviously, if you wanted to break it down step by step, it's uh, getting through preseason, really. Uh, creating that chemistry between the team where everyone knows the system like the back of their hand. And then it's starting the season really well and being consistent through games. We obviously know that there's a lot of competition this year. Um, there's going to be some difficulties with national team games and us missing games because of, of the overlap and stuff like that. And then it's understanding that, you know, we get back into the playoffs in a good form then anything is possible at then. But I, I, you can ask anyone from TFC, and the goal is to win MLS Cup. And lastly, uh, just a, a fun question I've been asking a lot of the players. What is your favorite stadium to play in as a visitor? But well, you're unique because you can't say LA or Colorado. Ah, <laughs> uh, Good question. Um, I would say my favorite stadium to play in is probably uh, Red Bull Arena. I think just. Uh, it just reminds me so much of a European stadium. Um, and I remember I used to play a lot of games there when I was in the USL. So I do like playing there. I haven't played there in a while, but now I'm back in the Eastern Conference. So I'll get at least one game there. Yeah. Any final questions for Mark before we let him go? No? All right, Mark. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you for you your time.